What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be working on my 2016 Ram 1500. Now you're watching this because you probably just got a P018C engine code or a P018D engine code. And that is fuel pressure sensor circuit low for C and high for D, the P018D. The reason I want to make this video is because I did a whole bunch of research trying to you know, figure this out and couldn't find anything. I called dealerships local to me and basically got nothing out of them. So hopefully this, this video will help you guys out. Now, there are several videos on YouTube that are great at explaining how to replace the fuel pressure sensor that I'm about to show you guys. However, it seems that Ram or Chrysler or Stellantis, whatever the company is called now, just went through a redesign for this specific fuel pressure sensor. They, it's, It looks like it's a different connector than it was previously. I already have it fixed on my truck. I tried doing a step-by-step -step detailed instructional video between before yesterday, yesterday, and today. And uh, I finally figured it out. So I might not be able to share a whole bunch of like me physically working on the truck because it's already fixed and I don't want to take it apart again, but I'll do my best to explain what I did to fix this. Should you be in the same boat that I was in? All right, so before I start showing you guys the parts and whatnot, uh, let me show you guys at least the tools that you'll need to be able to get to the fuel pressure sensor. So you'll need some wire cutters or wire strippers for when we need to go install the new harness. A uh, flathead screwdriver will suffice, a fuel line removal tool, and I'll go ahead and insert links in the description down below to some helpful tools that I think would benefit you guys when doing this job. And just like uh, a pick, or you probably don't even need the pick, you could probably work around with the flathead screwdriver and uh, some electrical tape. Also, you'll need buck connectors to connect the both ends of the wiring if you want to be safe. Go ahead and get yourself a 10 millimeter to remove one of the battery terminals. This is the old fuel pressure sensor, right? And I'll show you guys where it goes here shortly. This is an old, uh, here, let me remove the connector. This is the old design for the connector. They, looks like they went through a redesign and to install the new sensor, you got, you know, obviously you have to remove this part because the sensor is bad. And you also have to remove the connector that is connected to it. Now to remove this connector, there's a white clip that goes in here. To remove that clip, you just take your pick or your screwdriver and just push in right here and then pull, like pry it open while you're pushing that in. Once that clip is out, then you go ahead and push on this with your, uh, with your thumb or your fingers or whatever and just shimmy it off and it comes right off. Now... Keep in mind why I cut the wiring with some wire on it because I wanted to be able to see which, you know, which wires went where. I tried doing it to where I lined this up the same way with the other connector and it went from P018C to P018D. Obviously, that's the wrong wiring. What these wires are, this wire right here is your 5 volt, right? This is your ground and this is a signal wire, okay? Make sure you make note of that, right? On the new connector, if we were to look at the connector like this with the tab right there, and I'll, I'll probably insert a, to a picture that I found online that was very helpful to me, uh, comparing this to what's existent on, or comparing this to the new part, right? So make note of that. If, if we're looking at the connector, the new connector, right? The one we're supposed to splice in. If we're looking at it with a tab like that and it's supposed to plug into the part, this is how you want it, right? You want the five volt, which is our yellow pink, right? So I'm, I'm trying not to confuse you guys. You want your five volt, which is your yellow pink, all the way to the right side. You know, if you're looking at the connector like this, so your, your five volt yellow pink would be here. Your, gra your uh, signal wire, which is your brown yellow, will go down the center. And your ground, which is your brown white, will go on the left side right here. So 
Uh, I'm pretty sure they're the same thing for all these Ram 1500s, at least the Platform DS. So if you have these color code wires, this is how you want them going into the back of your connector. Once you have the wiring schematic lined up with what I just explained or what, I'm, or what I showed in this video, you should be able to go into your truck, you know, plug your battery back in and whatnot, get your scanner going, clear the code. Now I did hear online from people saying that uh, after a few drive cycles, so you go on a drive, let the car get warm, and then uh, let the car get cold again. Uh, I've heard from, or just look, you know, just reading on forums and whatnot that people say that uh, the, the engine light goes away just after a few drive cycles. However, I have a scanner, so I was able to clear the fault. Let me show you guys the connector and the fuel pressure sensor and where it's located. All right, so I'm gonna to try to remember my steps as best as possible. You know, first off, we're going to remove one of the battery terminals using your 10 mil. Then there's an engine cover right here that I have removed. I still haven't put it back. To remove the engine cover so that you can get to the fuel uh, pressure sensor, we gotta remove this intake tube first. And to remove this intake tube, you just gotta, you know, grab yourself a flathead screwdriver and loosen it up right there and then loosen up that clamp right there and then you should be able to just shimmy this off obviously you want to remove this connector once you have this tube off then you can go ahead and just uh, pry off the engine cover once you have the engine cover out of the way then you've got access to the fuel pressure sensor here now it is in an awkward spot so you know i've got myself a stool here that i'm standing on so once we're in here, uh, to remove the old fuel pressure sensor, just grab your flathead screwdriver or your pick, go ahead and pry over here. Uh, this tab comes up. Once that tab comes up, you can go ahead and push on this side and on the other side, just kind of squeeze them together and then pry it downwards. Once this clip comes down, then um, you're, you're not locked on the nipple anymore and you can pull this off. Now, just be aware when you go to pull this off, there's pressured, you know, fuel in here. So maybe, you know, grab yourself a rag or, or something, just cover it. Well, when you pull it off, it'll just spray the rag a little bit, just so it doesn't get in your eyes and whatnot. Once that side's off, you can go ahead and remove the connector. And to remove the connector, I talked about it briefly where you got to remove the white tab first, and then you go ahead and pull it off with that thumb tab. Once the connector's off, then you gotta remove the bottom. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. So the wiring is in the way, but to get to the bottom of the fuel line right there, you'll use your fuel line or your fuel line tool, your fuel line removal tool. Let me show you guys how that's used. Uh, you could probably find this at your local hardware store. So let's imagine this is installed like that inside the, the fuel line. All you gotta do is just take this, kind of hug around the fuel line, and then you're gonna push down. So you, you're gonna push down on it because there's ears grabbing around this this uh, this tab right there. So you push down, and once you get those ears off, then you you know you're pushing down while you're pulling at the same time. Uh, this might take some force, so just be patient with it, uh, and then you should be able to pull it out. Once you get that out, boom, you've got it out. Now you can install the new one. To install the new one, you just you push it, you push it in until you hear the click. And then obviously this side, you'll push it back onto the nipple on the fuel rail. And then uh, the clip will just go, you'll just pop it up like that. Sorry guys, don't have a cameraman. There we go. So once you pop this into place, then you just secure the tab like that and you're secure. And then you go ahead and just like shimmy on it both on both ends just to make sure that they're nice and tight in there. I did forget to mention, and this is just because my truck is missing it for some odd reason. There is a locking, like a metal locking tab that's that goes that, that goes like on here um, that you gotta remove first before using your fuel line tool. And to do that. You literally, like the, if the metal tab, uh, I'm trying to see how I can explain this. So the metal tab's like this, and then there's like teeth going into the groove. 
to remove the metal tab, you literally take your, your flathead screwdriver and then you're gonna pry over here while it's on the on the metal on the tube. You pry you pry it out like this, and once that's pried out, then you should be able to pull the teeth out from the, the groove, and then the metal tab just comes loose. In my case, I don't have one, so I I couldn't demonstrate it. Yeah, once you remove that metal tab, then you can use your fuel line removal tool. Sorry guys, it's it's late at night, but I really hope this video helps whoever needs to get this repaired. Once you remove the old one, you install the new fuel pressure sensor, then you can get yourself some like uh, wire connectors. And I've, I've got the wire connectors. You can see how I've got them. I'll, I'll go ahead and cover them up with some electrical tape here in a bit. Just one thing I kind of want to explain to you guys, just because if you're not really electrical savvy, when you get this connector, you're going to get it with the wires separate from this actual connector. And to install the wiring into the connector, they've they include they include two set two separate sets of wires. They include some like white and yellow ones, right? That look like this, and they also include the the blue ones. I went ahead with the blue ones just because it's a thicker gauge metal or a thicker gauge wire. I mean, so this is what the end of the pins look like. Let's see if I can get my autofocus on it, and then the side that has there's a there's a side that has a groove on it right i don't know if you guys can see that that side that has a groove so the side with the groove will go into this connector and the groove will be facing up this side right so the the grooves are all over here you know inside this connector so to before you push the the pins into the connector you gotta take this red locking tab so you just you just take yourself a, a pick or a flathead screwdriver and you just, you pry on this, this locking tab right here, the red locking tab, and it pushes it out this way. It doesn't come off completely. It literally just pushes it out maybe like a, like a millimeter or two, right? Once you move that out of the way, then you could push these pins in, right? The wires in, and then you lock the red tab by pushing it back. And then if you, for some reason, you know, missed the whole topic of this video and how the wiring schematic went and you, you know, got it wrong and you're getting a code P018D, then you can, if you, if you need to switch the pins, like I needed to, all you gotta do is remove that locking tab again, rearrange your, your wiring, and then push it back in. So at least when they designed the new harness, they knew that you were going to make this mistake, probably. That's why they made it easy for us to be able to rearrange the wiring. Now, when you when you do remove this tab and you go to pull this, it will be kind of hard to pull it, but it, it does come out. Anyways, we'll go ahead and plug that back in. All right, once that's plugged in, you know, and you're good to go, you plug your, your battery back in, and then you go on the truck, uh, you just do like a, uh, you, you turn the key to the ignition on without the engine running. Do that a few times just to prime the, the fuel lines, just to get, you know, the, the fuel in through the lines. Do that a couple times and then start up the truck and uh, you should be golden and then uh, obviously clear your code and whatnot all right so i know i'm doing a lot of talking but hopefully this video is beneficial to uh to you if you're facing the same issue if you've made it this far in the video and you know how to operate a scanner you don't have to keep watching however i wanted to show you what i was seeing on the scanner side of things also the uh, scanner that i'm using is a maxi check it's a autel maxi check mx808 i'll go ahead and insert a link in the description down below to this uh, scanner as well this thing's been awesome i've had this thing since like 2018 and you can update it for free and all that so you go into your scanner you select the your make of your truck for some reason it's still dodge in here you select dodge and then it has an automatic a uh, an automatic like vin vin reader so uh, it'll read your vin and know what kind of truck it is so 2016 ram 1500 you go into it you could do either an auto scan where it scans all the modules or you can scan by you know a specific module in my case you know let's see see either auto scan or control unit so i want to select the control unit the fuel pressure sensor is power part of the powertrain the engine control module and then and when you go to read your code, it'll say the P018D or P018C. In my case, I've already cleared it. To erase the code, you could do that. But I want to show you live data-wise 
what the what's a telltale that your your fuel pressure sensor is you know not good so if you go into here this is just showing you all the like live data and right now i've got the truck in the ignition on position with the engine off so if you scroll it's like near the bottom let's see if you see right here this is the desired rail pressure and that's the variable um that's the fuel pump actual rail pressure so the actual rail, rail pressure is the live reading so you can see that it's changing that's good for a bad fuel pressure sensor or like in my case when it was bad i believe their like lockout number is uh or value is 62.36 or 37 right so right now it's saying desired i think because the truck is off it's supposed to be like 58 psi but it, mine was just reading 62.36 and it was literally just locked in its position whether the, the truck was on off well actually if it was off it would go to zero but it'd go just zero to 62.36 and that's just a good telltale to tell you that yeah your fuel pressure sensor is you know not good anymore so you see right now it's 60.7 let's go ahead and turn on the truck all right so desired pressure 58 actual pressure 58 so and it's fluctuating so that means we're good and our sensor works and i need a washer fluid but our check engine light is gone ignore the service airbag that's something else i gotta take care of but yeah so if you've made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you watching this and I hope that this video benefited you. I did try to do a step-by-step -step installation yesterday, but by the end of the night, I just I still was getting an engine code and I couldn't figure it out. But I'm glad that I figured it out today. I'm also upset that none of the dealerships were willing to help me look this up. It literally could have just been an easy, put in your VIN number and look up a wiring diagram. I'm in the automotive engineering field and I know what's out there and available to you at the dealership. So it was just, it was a little upsetting that they couldn't do that for me. Sorry about my little rant, but yeah, I'm going to stop talking. I'm done with my little rant there. Uh, if you found this video helpful and I hope it did help you, uh, go ahead and like, share and subscribe to the channel. It motivates me to do more of this kind of content. If you have any suggestions for the people that are going to watch this and, you know, read the comments, go ahead and drop them down below. But for now, I'm just going to call it a night. Go to sleep, got work in the early morning. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.